Well, we continue our count of the top weather events of uh, 2016, and we're up to number two now. I can tell by this picture, it's probably going to be something winter related. And it is actually one of the biggest snowstorms of the year, many, the biggest one in several years for many areas. The snowstorm that occurred from March 20th all the way through March 30th, affecting especially areas east of the divide. And right now I want to go into a little bit of science content here. Again, this isn't really going to be really heavy-duty science content, not by uh, college level by any means, but just some basic things of what meteorologists look for when they're trying to forecast if some areas are starting to get a lot of snow. One thing we look at is the surface map, and I want you to notice the areas of low pressure here are certified by the L's. And note where they are. It's maybe a little hard to see here, but this is in northeastern Colorado. And for places like Casper, Riverton, Lander, all the way up toward Dubois, and even Thermopolis to a lesser extent, it's a good spot to get a lot of snow because when the counterclockwise winds rotate around this low, it'll upslope up against the Wind River Range as well as Casper Mountain, help squeeze some of that moisture out. And another thing we look at is what we call a 500 millibar chart. This is about 18,000 feet up, give or take about 1,000. One thing, a couple of things I want you to notice. One, we have an upper level low moving through here. This helps enhance lift. But the thing we really look for is look at how these equal lines here get a little further apart when they go toward Wyoming. This is what we call upper level divergence. One thing about the atmosphere, and this is how you get winds and how a lot of the weather is derived, is that the atmosphere is always trying to balance itself out. So as the air diverges aloft, it's got to converge at the surface. And when the air converges at the surface, it can't go down to the ground, so it goes back up. You get lift, that's how you get clouds. And when the water condenses out of the clouds, you get rain, and in this case, snow. And another thing we look at is what we call upper level dynamics. This is a, the jet stream chart, about say 30, 34,000 feet up in the atmosphere. Now you can see the jet, this blue area here. Now I want you to notice where the strongest winds are. You can see uh, right there. And the one thing you want to notice is where in the jet we are. Now there's two areas we look for for the best uh, snow producers. One's the uh, left front quadrant and the right rear quadrant. Now just picture that if, it's, if you're driving the jet stream, the left front quadrant would be the driver's seat and the right rear quadrant would be the back passenger seat on the right. And you can see Wyoming, we're pretty close to that left front quad of the jet right there. It also helps enhance uh, upper level lift. There's a lot of uh, math that goes along with it. It involves calculus. It gives me nightmares just thinking about it. And quite frankly, I forgot a lot of it since it was 20 years ago since I took that, but we'll leave it at that. What you really want to know is if you can't remember how much snowfall that we get. You can see the areas of the heaviest snowfall, 18 to 26 inches around the lander area. Some places up in the mountains got close to three feet out of this. Other areas here by the upslope, 12 to 18 in Riverden. Up here at the airport, we got about 17 to 18 inches, the biggest single snowstorm since 1999, as a matter of fact. And over here in Casper, 10 to 18 inches, up to 30 inches on Casper Mountain. I can remember recording a video on the evening of the 29th. I hadn't really done anything in Casper at that point. And we are getting a little worried, say about 10 or 11 o'clock, we are getting comments on the video saying, where's the snow, where's the snow? Well, people woke up the next morning and there was a foot of snow on the ground. Some really heavy snowfall rates when, you know, that upslope really kicked in there. At some places, two inches an hour. Up on Casper Mountain, probably three to four inches an hour. So quite a contrast when I went to bed on Sunday and woke up the next morning. And uh, as a matter of fact, another big thing this leads into is uh, how wet it was both March and April, because the winter was actually fairly dry. You can see the anomalies here as to how uh, wet it was. You can see a Casper about three inches above normal. Lander, the one that really stands out, about six inches above normal, five inches in Riverton for the uh, March and April. You see the rank for the wettest months. You can see a lot of ones and twos in here. The wettest on record in Lander, Riverton, as well as Jeffrey City, number two in Casper. And this leads into number one. Do you know what it is? Can you figure it out? Well, if you can't figure it out, you're just gonna have to wait till tomorrow. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you wanna see number one, tune in same time tomorrow.